Okay, we are continuing with the further math chapter summaries and we are on to volumes of revolution. It's worth noting that this is for year one. So all of the functions are going to be pretty straightforward, nothing too complex for these ones. And as I always say, it's not possible for these chapter summaries to cover all of the ways that it can be assessed in the exam. This is just here to refresh a quick bit of revision. Make sure that you are doing proper, proper exam questions to get yourselves prepared for the real thing. So quick thing to kind of remind us again, it's further maths. I don't need to go into too much detail here. If it is about the x-axis, we do pi y squared dx. So x-axis has the dx at the end and a y squared here. If it's about the y-axis, it has dy at the end and x squared instead. And of course, these limits a and b are referring to the x-axis here. And these limits a and b are referring to the y-axis here. You can always tell by the last part which thing it is referring to. You may also need to find volumes of cylinders and cones, which are GCSE volume formulae, but I just think it's worth remembering them. Of course, you can do these things using integration, but it feels pretty over the top to find out the volume created underneath this part or this part here using integration when you can just use these very simple formulae that you have here. So about the X or the Y axes, we're going to see which one it's for in this question. It says the diagram shows a curve made up of three sections for x between 0 and 1. It is this curve here, which is y is x squared plus a third x to the half. A straight horizontal line for 1 between 1 and 4, which we can see here and here. And then a line segment connecting back to the x-axis. And this is a straight line that we've got here. Find the exact volume of revolution when the curve is rotated 360 degrees about the x-axis, giving your answer in terms of pi. So it looks like we're going to have three different sections, right? We're going to have this section, this section, and then the last part. Obviously, when it gets rotated, it's going to create this kind of like three-dimensional shape like this. I don't really know how helpful that is to kind of have on my diagram. This part, we're going to be doing algebra. This part, imagining the shape it's going to create, is a cylinder. And this part, it's going to create a cone. So I'm going to do it in three different sections. I'll probably start off with this algebraic part that we've got here, okay? So for the algebraic parts, I think I've already got the stuff I need. The limits are gonna be between zero and one, and I'm just gonna be doing pi y squared dx. So let's do the first part. We have that y is x squared plus a third x to the half. And I'm just gonna calculate what y squared is. So y squared, is going to be x squared plus a third x to the half multiplied by x squared plus a third x to the half. You don't have to do the double brackets if you can do it in your head, but sometimes it's helpful. So we get an x to the four. We then get a third x to the half times an x squared, and we get two of those. So it's going to be two thirds x squared x to the half. That's going to be x to the five over two. And then for the last part, a third times a third is a ninth, and then the half times the half is just the x that we've got here. So we are going to be doing, the volume of that first part is going to be pi y squared, which is x to the 4, plus 2 thirds x to the 5 over 2, plus 1 ninth x dx, and the limits for the x were between 0 and 1. So just in the effort of saving some space, I'm just going to go straight here. I'll make sure I keep pi, and I will integrate. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to put the brackets on, on same. So that'll be x to the power of 5 and a fifth. It will go from 5 over 2 to 7 over 2, and then this needs to be multiplied by a 2 over 7. 2 thirds times 2 over 7, well, the numerator will be a 4, and the denominator will be the 3 and the 7, which is the 21. And then for the last part, we're going to have an x squared... We're going to multiply by half. 1 over 9 becomes 1 over 18. Again, I go through kind of these things a little bit faster than I would do than in normal maths um, because it's further maths, right? So when I substitute in 1, I'll get a fifth. 4 over 21 and 1 over 18. And when I substitute in 0, those things all end up as 0. So a fifth plus 4 over 21 plus 1 over 18. A fifth plus 4 over 21 plus... 1 over 18 is a weird number, 281 over 630 pi for that first section. Okay, so for this cylinder, we're imagining this sort of shape here like a cylinder, this one, okay? We are going to think about the things we need for this. So for the cylinder, we need to know the height. It's like a cylinder on its side, right? So the volume is going to be pi times the radius squared. Well, the radius 
is going to be this part. We actually don't know how tall that is, so I think we need to figure that out. How can we figure that out? Ah, well, we know if we figure out this height here, we can use the curve to do that because at one, we should know what this is going to be. So I'm just going to substitute in one into this to find out the y coordinate. So when x equals one, y would be one squared plus a third times by one to the power of a half. That's just going to be a one plus a third. One plus a third is four thirds. So I now know that the height of this is four thirds. That means for our formula for the volume of a cylinder, that's pi r squared. The height is really saying how tall it is going to be. And we can see it's going between one and four, which is just going to be three. So that is four thirds squared times three. That is 16 over three pi. And then for the last part, the cone, the formula is a third times pi times by, well, the radius of the cone, you can see here, the radius of the cone is still four over three. So that's times it by four over three squared, but this times the height of the cone is just this part. It's quite a short cone and the height of that is just one. So we're gonna do four thirds squared times it by a third, times it by one, times it by pi, and we get 16 over 27 pi. So this means the total volume that is created is this weird one down here, the 281 over 630 pi. We then have the volume of the cylinder, which is the 16 over 3 pi, and the 16 over 27 pi that we've got. So I shall do the 16 over 27, the 16 over 3, the 281 over 630, if I can type it rather than 360. Why have I done that twice? 630. And we get 12043 over 1890 pi in its exact form like this. Now, I very much hope if you tried this yourself first, you weren't trying to calculate the equation of this line. I hope you just use the formula for the volume of a cone. It is so, so much quicker than this. Uh, sorry, so much quicker than doing the sort of algebraic approach. Okay, four modeling questions. You basically need to, well, I'll talk, I'll talk through these things in just a second because they'll kind of come up later on in the question. Um, so we're going to just see if we can apply these things to modeling questions. They love to do these modeling questions, particularly these ones where there are some unknowns like this. So the diagram shows a sketch of a 7.5 centimeters tall, small decorative bowl. So the height of this is 7.5 centimeters. It has a flat circular base with diameter 3 centimeters and a circular opening of diameter 12 centimeters at the top. To find the volume inside the decorative bowl, a curve with equation y equals the square root of ax squared minus b is used to model the curve of the bowl's side, this part here. The curve is then rotated 360 degrees about the y-axis. We're going to start off by finding the values of a and b. Now we have two unknowns here, so we need to have two coordinates. Now I've kind of made them a bit clear with these sort of things written on the, the, the numbers on the axis, but they told us that the diameter from here to here was three centimeters. So from the middle, we can see that this coordinate that we've got has an X coordinate of 1.5, and clearly we can see it has a Y coordinate of zero. They've also told us that the top of the bowl is 12 centimeters. So halfway across, this coordinate has got to be a six, and it does kind of match up with what we see in the diagram. There's one more thing I haven't included, which is that the height of the bowl is 7.5 centimeters tall. And again, I've given you some numbers on this diagram. Maybe I could have made it harder and got rid of these numbers, but this is roughly 7.5. So we've got the six and the 7.5 and the 1.5 and the zero. So I'm gonna take those two coordinates and I'm basically gonna sub it into here. Two coordinates, two unknowns, should be able to find out what A and B are. So I'll start off. When X equals 1.5, Y equals zero. And we're using y equals the square root of ax squared minus b. So zero is equal to the square root of x squared, 1.5 squared is 2.25. 2.25 uh, a minus b. Of course, you could do that as a fraction if you wanted to. So I can square both sides and I get 2.25, 2.25 a minus b equals zero. In other words, 
2.25a is equal to b. Now my other one is that when x is equal to 6, y is 7.5. So 7.5 is equal to, well I'll square the x which is 36, so that's 36a minus b. Okay, square both sides. 7.5 squared is 56.25 is equal to 36a minus b. Now, if you really wanted to, you could have just taken this equation and this equation and solved them simultaneously on the calculator. I've kind of already started this process, so I'm not going to use the calculator for this. I'm going to do it in the manual kind of way. And I'm going to take this and I'll sub it in here. So 56.25 is equal to 36a minus 2.25a. So 36 minus 2.25, that is 33.75. 33.75a is 56.25, which tells me that a is 56.25 divided by that answer. a is 5 over 3. Let's see if I can write this a is 5 over 3, and then very quickly I can use that to find out what B is, right? Because B is just uh, A times by 2.25. And so B is 15 over 4. So B is 15 over 4. Like I said, you could have just put this on the simultaneous equation solver, and it would have been fine. So that was part A. We're now going to do part B. We're going to find the volume for the bowl as predicted by the model. So it's about the y-axis for part B. And the equation is that y is the square root of ax squared, ax squared minus b, which is 15 over 4. So the volume will be about the y-axis. I know it's going to have a dy, which means this must be an x squared. And the y limits for this, well, we're going from the bottom to the top, so it's going to be going from the 0 to the 7.5, okay? So it's going to the 0 to the 7.5. So I need to find out what x squared is as the subject. I'll square both sides like this. I'm going to add the 15 over 4. And then I'm going to multiply by 3 and divide by 5. So I'll multiply by 3 and divide by 5. And for 15 over 4, I will multiply by 3, divide by 5, and we get 9 over 4. So now I have that, I can put it in the calculation over here. So it's going to be pi, the integral between 0 and 7.5, of 3 fifths y squared plus 9 quarters dy. Actually do the integration now. So y cubed divided by 3, and plus 9 over 4 multiplied by y between 0 and 7.5. So when I put the 7.5 in, always show the examiner we know how to do a substitution, even though we could just whack it all on the calculator. Obviously, it's going to be a minus 0 and a minus 0. So we have 7.5 cubed over 5 plus 9 over 4 times by 7.5. And we get 405 over 4 pi. And it says, find the volume of the bowl as predicted by the model. Well, I think it's probably a good idea. This is it, like in the exact form. I think it probably makes sense because we're talking about a bowl here to actually say what 405 over 4 times by pi is to three significant figures, which is 318 centimeters cubed to three significant figures. So the examiner's got the rounded version and it's also got the exact version because it's in a modeling context, kind of makes sense to do that. So now we've got part C, which is to give a limitation of the model. So for model criticisms, these are typically the ones I like to use. The curve may not be a good fit for the object, for the thing that we're describing. What I mean by that is this curve here may not perfectly describe this thing. The thickness of the edge has not been taken into account. Like this bowl isn't made out of something that is very, very thin, like a infinitely thin piece of paper. It's made out of probably clay or glass or something, and that hasn't been taken into account. I've said etc because there's plenty of things they would accept depending on what the context is. If it's being filled with like concrete or something, there might be bubbles in the concrete. So do just look at mark schemes for the kinds of things that are suggested. So I'm going to say for a limitation of this model, I'm actually going to say the curve may not be a good fit for the curve of the bowl. It's just kind of a classic one to say for this. So the curve, the 
curve, if I can write neatly, may not be a good fit for the bowls curve. Equally, it might be a good idea to say something about the thickness of the, the, the edge of the bowl hasn't been taken into account. And then the last one says, when water is poured into the bowl, its capacity is found to be 320 millilitres. Comment on the suitability of the model. Well, first of all, we know that millilitres for water is equivalent to centimetres cubed, right? So that's one thing that we can see. We calculated it as 318 millilitres. They've said it's 320 millilitres. This is very, very, very accurate that we've got here. In terms of whether it's suitable or not, we usually can go with this, right? If it's within 10%, um, of the true value, we can argue that it's a good model. Sometimes you can say that's a bad model, but generally I just say if it's within 10%, we can say that it is a good model. And clearly this is within 10%. In fact, we'll actually calculate how close it is. So our one is 318 out of 320. If I do 318 out of 320, in fact, I might do it with the exact stored value that we had. That was 405 over four times pi divided by 320. It's like 0 0.99401 like this. In other words, that is 99.4%. It's actually within 1%. So we can say that the model is less than 1% underestimate. This is very close. So the model is suitable. So even though maybe there was some errors to do with like the curve not fitting properly, or we didn't take the thickness into account, it's a pretty good model. We've got something that is so close to the true value of 320 millilitres. 318 is very, very close to that. Now, like I said, this is a pretty tricky topic and it does come up again in year two, but this is all of the theory that you need for this kind of stuff. Um, I hope to see you in another video sometime soon, guys. Good luck with your revision. See you soon.